Well, good afternoon, everybody. The first thing I want to do is I want to acknowledge my friends that came. Thank you, Katie, Joe, Ridley, Emma. Thank you very much. The people who don't know me, I'm a man of a few words. With that in mind, I'm compelled to say thank you to a lot of people. I'm truly honored standing up here thanks to the Hall of Fame and congrats to all the other inductees. I do owe one person an apology. Where's my mind? Right there. Mike, I found out Mike was trying to call me for months to inform me on my induction into the Hall of Fame. I knew Mike was a realtor. I assumed he wanted to sell my house. I didn't want to sell my house, so I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm sorry. Footnote, I still want to sell my house. I want to thank the following people for being influential in my life in Cherry Hill, scholastically and in sports. Mrs. Harbors, my sixth grade uh, teacher at Horseman Elementary School, thank you for helping me transition into a new school. The late Mrs. Joan Katz, our, our East uh, principal, I want to thank her for her guidance and her help. She really helped me out with a few things. My speech therapist and second mom, Mrs. Shuey, thank you for your encouragement and teaching. I love you. Coach Martin, thank you for being a mentor and helping me enhance my baseball skills. Thanks for encouraging me to coach at the Hit Doctor Academy and assisting me to get into Temple University. Thank you. Coach Bill Swift, thank you. Coach Heisman, I don't know if you're here, but thank you very much too. After getting some offers to play baseball and football at local and out-of-state colleges, I chose to join Temple University as a walk-in. I eventually received a baseball scholarship. While I was at Temple, I was reunited with my youth baseball friend, Steve Yates. We were lucky enough to play in two NCAA regional college World Series. Coach Wood, thanks to you for using me as a Swiss Army Knight and placing me in multiple positions to help the team. Mr. Bolchikov, thank you for helping us in student council and inspiring us to become mature students. I want to do something that's kind of unusual. I want to thank my team captains of the 1979 football team, Larry Hansen and Jeff Smith. They encouraged a culture that blended seniors and younger ball players to integrate and bond as a team. Even though we lost in states, we were a very good team. To my parents who have passed, Leo and Renata Gonzalez, they promoted and emphasized sports during my childhood. Their sports careers were shortened during World War II. My father had to work to support his family, and my mom had to survive food shortages and bomb raids during her youth. They vicariously lived through these sports, and I felt this immense obligation to make them happy. I think I achieved that. To my sisters, Christina, thank you for being my protector, and I love you very much. And Maria, Thank you for being honest with me and telling me, don't be an idiot, Mary Joan. <laughs> <laughs> to my late in-laws, Joan and Matero, and Joan's sisters and extended family, thank you for accepting me into their tight-knit, loud Italian family. I love you all. I want to give a shout out here. The girls' teams of 1979 was amazing. Their teams were better than the boys, and they accomplished a lot, and I think they should be recognized. Players like Kathy Petrowski, Leslie Lanza, Valerie Still, and numerous others. They were outstanding. My story begins with my father retiring from the Army and my family moving to Cherry Hill. My parents were told of the superb education sports teams in the Cherry Hill school system. There was a culture shock arriving into an area that wasn't as diverse as the, of the military bases I had once lived. I faced several challenges trying to integrate into a middle-class suburban lifestyle. I realized right away that the Apple Hill, uh, Apple Hill, Ashland section of Cherry Hill was more of my liking. I enjoyed this part of town very much. We were very passionate about our sports. I still remember the fierce competition during sporting events on the, uh, on the fields of Horace Mann Elementary School. It was a time period of the Broad Street Bullets, and we tried to emulate them as much as possible. While playing street hockey, basketball, and football, I've never been punched, poked, or pounced upon more in my life. It prepared me for high school. Okay, here, here's the heart. When I entered Cherry Hill East, I met my high school sweetheart, Joan and Terrell. We've been married for 37 wonderful years. 
She's been my best support. She attended most of my high school games and college games. She won this award more than anyone. She was elated and overjoyed to hear of my induction into the Hall of Fame. She guided this very intense and secure young boy to a semi-well-adjusted man. Joan herself, a retired school system teacher, is still respected by her past students. They still call her, they still call her for guidance. Our, our kids call her Gigi, and she, her remarkable nurturing nature is displayed every day. To Leo, AJ, and Howard, and no one. She exposes them to educational puzzles, games, and things like that. After the children spent all day with her, I arrive home, walk into the door, yell pillow fight, and whack each other for 10 minutes. Some of my fondest memories are, I remember our senior prom. They were dancing in a huge circle to the Mexican half dance, and the entire football team danced with me. Another sporting memory was the football seniors, drawing new chalk figures of females on the board before the coaches arrived, and the coaches thinking that I did it. One of my greatest sports memories was playing football my senior year. It was against Woodrow Wilson High School. It was the powerful Mike Myers defense against the Mike Rozier Heisman winner offense. I remember my father was so excited about the game. He wanted to travel in style in his yellowish orange Monte Carlo. He loved the car very much. However, it resembled a rectangular block of Velveeta cheese. He loved it and parked it outside the stadium and kept an eye on it in the stands. The game was pretty intense. And back and forth, Mike had an excellent game. He made a lot of tackles. We were losing the game 8 7 in the fourth. I remember it was fourth and nine with 40 seconds left. Aldonado threw and found Doug Cook. Doug got pelted. Couldn't believe he kept the ball. It inspired us. We went all the way down to the five-yard line. Doug Cook kicked the field goal and he won. I could see from the field, everybody was so excited. I looked up in the stand. I saw my father. He gave me a wave. I gave him a fist pump. He came down to give me a hug. But his expression changed. I said, Dad, what's the matter? Oh, I'm happy for you, but someone stole my goddamn hubcaps. <laughs> <laughs> to my family. Alicia, John, Leo, and AJ, to Justin, Rachel, and Owen, to Michelle, Mike, and Howie, you are wonderful parents, and you're tremendous people. A few rules I live by and hope this will help you in time being. Number one, do not fear failure. So embrace failure knowing that it's one step to success. Make a plan. Achieve goals and help yourself who enters. Use your education and experience. Number three, find your passion. My mother taught me the word Van Enzimpat. It's a German word that means the feeling of inspiration alone in the woods. A calming passion that motivates you and can inspire you. Finding inspiration in nature and hobbies will make you a better husband, a better father, and a better friend. I hope that this message will help. We're almost near the end. I remember one of my children asked me if I was a star in high school. I responded and said no. But I played with many stars. I practiced and tried really hard and had a heart of a lion. Let me rephrase that. A heart of a Cherry Hill Cougar. Go East. Thank you.